Wow, has this been quite an adventure working on this bus? If you remember this one, it came in, uh, all kinds of air leaks and had like the world's rustiest brakes on it. We had to replace the whole brake on the tag axle and stuff. But just wait, it gets even worse when you find out about what's going on with the brakes on this. This is the check engine light repair kit. Or if you're the advanced method, remove the light bulb. Um, that's another way of doing it. No, we would never do that. Um, but what if you're selling a 40,000 pound bus and your ABS light was on, so you just decided to put some tape over it so nobody would know there was a problem with the ABS system on it. Or let's say you remove the light bulb. So there's no indicator on the dash, the ABS is not working properly. That's what you're gonna find out what happened on this bus. Well, this bus turned into an even bigger can of worms this week, as we thought we were gonna be all done with it. Um, but as you, as you see in this video here, we got into it here and just, uh, the major safety systems were disabled on this bus um, and hidden from the purchase purchaser of it. And I'm pretty sure it was in revenue service with that ha with it disabled like that. And had it have ever gotten into an accident in commercial service, I think there would have been a big lawsuit. Um, you know, if you disable safety systems on a vehicle that it came with from the factory, it's like disabling the airbags um, kind of thing. And uh, some somebody could have got hurt and... Uh, I, I don't think that it's legal in commercial service to do what they did, but uh, watch this video and you'll see some pretty shocking discoveries. You can see it's compressed considerably. The old versus the new, plus they were all chewed up. But that's what puts the right tension on there. Might have to chase it around a couple of times to get it to the right. Might be stretching too much now. Bolts. Okay, smear a little Permatex on there. Same thing on that end down there. We got the pan gasket on. We're gonna lift it up together here in place, get a couple bolts in it. I don't think I'm gonna be that talented. See it on this side all the way. Here's the new gasket we made for that filler tube. We just knocked it out with a ball peen hammer and the, used the old one as a pattern. This is that nasty transmission fluid that we drained out of there. Look how brown and nasty it is. Okay, go ahead. Might be able to grab it with a pair of pliers now and pull it out. Two pair of channel locks. Want me to hit it with the hammer if you're holding it tight? Sure. Thank you. 
Great. Yep. Did it move at all or just your pliers slipped? I think just the pliers moved. Broke the center cap off, of course, because it's completely rusted. Again. On the inside edge in here, so I'll spray everything. Okay. And then pound it back out. because I definitely see some dry spots on it now. Drop on a few washers down inside there. Push the cap out a little bit more. That's three already, and that'll be four. You want one more? And that's all. Okay. I don't know if it's because they're in there funky, but. Well, it should straighten them out. <laughs> More, you got it. Just needs to compress. You got it. That end should spin. That's good enough for now. Come down randomly. Yeah, that's true. You want me to use this pry bar? I'll come back the other way with this. Okay, come down. There you go. This side should be a lot easier with that style of clamp instead of the yoke.
Fantasy Zone? I don't know. What? I don't know. Oh. I'm going to push this that way a little bit. I'm going to let it down this way. Wear grooves that aren't supposed to be there. <laughs> I've been wearing on there too. Normally, when we get to see these, everything's just so caked with grease because it gets lubed so often, you know. But this one's, it's just rust everywhere. The only reason it's shiny is because we were spraying coil all over it. It was just, even the grease fitting is completely rusty. It's, it's never seen maintenance. It's a shame. You can, you can see how it's stepped out, how much it's worn. We got this awesome bolt bin we're putting together here. This is from M&M &M Bolts. There's their information there. Um, so we're getting things set up. It, it goes all the way from quarter 20s up to three quarter. So giant, giant three quarter inch bolts. Uh, but we're just getting everything organized now. I don't have the labels on it yet. We got labels to put on all the drawers and stuff. But uh, they have coupon code if you go to their website. Um, Welcome 15 gives you 15% off your first purchase. And then if you purchase from them before, you're just restocking. They gave us a coupon code BGM10, which will give you 10% off. Um, so use the Welcome 15 for your first purchase with them. And then uh, if you're reordering something or you've ordered from before, use that BGM10 and you'll save an extra 10% off of your order. So we're, like I said, we're just getting it all set up here. We're figuring out how we're gonna get it in there. But yeah, we got uh, locking nuts, nylon lock nuts. We got split washers. Um, flat washers and regular nuts There's the regular nuts for everything for all those sizes uh, so we'll be able to kind of help us out by having a big old nut and bolt bin here with uh, like 5,000 something pieces in it just in case we pull the slip yoke apart I marked it so it's clocked for us to have it balanced still <laughs>
If you need me to give you a hand, just let me know. Let me tie it up with a ratchet strap, Jonathan. I don't think so. I did anyway. Okay. I'm glad that little <laughs> shelf is there. Huh? I'm glad that little shelf thing's there. Mm -hmm. Turn it a little bit, will that make your life easier? Or you just gotta shorten it up? Because this, this did pull out, so we can squeeze it yeah, together. Yeah, it pulled out a little bit, but I don't, I don't know if I should take those uh, that wire off. Because you can get to it now. Yeah, before I pull it back out, if I can't leave it there. Just keep a hand on it so it doesn't come down and get you. Let's see if we can get some wire cutters. Get unfree or unstuck down. Go ahead and put a clamp on it so it can't fall out. Do those clamps have an outside tab? Like they only go one way? Are they? No. Okay. I think I can go either way. Not the same, I think. caps yeah okay that's good There's way more under this one a slip yoke that should take a lot you might want to do the u-joint first if it doesn't drip on you
that fitting out. I'm gonna have to loosen the tank. That fitting won't back out because it's right up against that metal box. Um, the tank is very rusty and so are the straps, but that's what we'll have to do. Is it turning with it? No. The, the shaft isn't turning? No, it's not. It looks like it's supposed to be a half inch. Again. It's because that bracket's pushing your wrench off, I think. Hmm? I think it's because the bracket's pushing your wrench off, but I think you're getting it. So we got a long crow's foot on there. Did move a little bit. We might be able to get it out now. Okay, so now I got it moved enough that we can get that fitting out and replaced. Do it by hand, not it's not turning, it's just going back and forth. These DOT brass fittings are not cheap. I'm glad we get a discount on them. They're not paid at this price. fitting was leaking here from this Norgren valve, we were able to just clock it 90 degrees tighter and it stopped the leak. But in order to do that, we had to lengthen the air line to it because it used to come out sideways here and it didn't reach where it needed to go. So, but we did get that air leak fixed. So that's good. One more knocked off the list. You got these plastic inner fender wells remounted here with some new bolts that we ran through. But uh, this was loose in here and rubbing against the tire and now it's mounted securely again. That's the rear dual inner fender.
four quarter turns. Okay, I don't know if I'm getting a quarter out of this. Yeah. Okay, release. All the way to the floor. You're pushing as hard as you can. Something's leaking. Release. Again, all the way to the floor. Release. One more time. Okay. Okay, go ahead and step on it. Okay, I can't figure it out yet. You can release. And the opposite end of it is leaking over there too. See it? Come on, that little thing. T. It's a T. Yeah, but it's the fitting, yeah. the push to connect. That's half inch. It looks like half inch, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Here's where we realize that we have something funky going on with this bus. I've never looked up in here to see all this stuff, but this is an ABS valve. This is in between a relay valve and the brake chamber. This is what tells it to pulsate uh, so that, you know, for ABS, so the brakes don't lock up. But this bus has ABS brakes, but none of the actual brakes are hooked up to the ABS. Everything has been completely disconnected. All the wires are way zip tied up high and cut off for where the sensor, they used to go to the sensors. There's no tone rings on the tag axles. Um, that one that we replaced, there was no, nothing hooked up for ABS, but this bus has ABS. Somebody has just disconnected it all. And uh, I'm pretty sure this happened in revenue service. Okay, show me where it's leaking at then. Okay, and that's coming out of the top of the Northern valve up there. Yeah. Try and plug it up. Uh, like hold, hold your finger on it tight. Can you actually stop it or is it too much pressure? Way too much pressure. Okay. Okay. If you look, you can see the ABS. It's actually melted from the light being on so much. And then I'm thinking they probably pulled the light bulb out and then disconnected all the ABS system. They couldn't get it fixed, didn't know how to fix it, wanted the light to go out, and they probably removed the light bulb or it actually burned out. But the, the actual key cover thing, you can see, see the indentation, it's melted. It was on for so long that the plastic, can you see that? I had it there, I thought. 
can see the end, the dent. Crap, how did I show that earlier? Kind of see it. Crazy. Yeah, this valve's got enough crap running to it. <laughs> you gotta take this out, spin this, and then that one will come. This one, I'm not even sure. I get, but you gotta take that out, and then that. The bottom one's the only easy one. Let's see how nasty it is down inside that northern valve. That o ring looks terrible. I'm sure that's why it was leaking. Contamination and gook. So spray, spray both tanks. The one on the, the left only has a slight leak, and the one on the right got all of it. <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> That's the air tanks themselves. Where the, where the straps go on there that rust it out. We can't weld on those or anything. That's just got to be replaced. That's our last big air leak, though, because we're, we're only leaking, like, 2 PSI a minute right now. It's definitely all right there. Okay, so here's the dash. When I turn the key to the on position, the ABS light is supposed to illuminate for a few seconds and then go out. They've definitely either removed the bulb which I don't want to take apart his dash to confirm, either that are totally burned out, but they have definitely cheated the system here. All right, we are just about done with this. Um, the tag axle brake, the new brake and everything, that's all adjusted properly and it's all taken care of there. We're waiting on two fittings to come in for, that were leaking there on the brake chambers, and then we'll put these dual wheels back on. This is all ready to go back together back here. Um, up front, we're getting the two new air tanks. Uh, we'll have those first part of the week because both those air tanks were all rusted out on there. Uh, the Norgren valve has been replaced, so that leak's taken care of. So the only leaks, the big leak that's left is just those two that are in the air tanks. And then those two fittings back there on the brake chambers that when you step on the brakes, apply. Uh, when you apply the brakes, they're leaking. But, uh, yeah, everything's just about done on it. I thought it would have been done this week, but those, that last minute thing of the air tanks. And then uh, I didn't have the air fittings here. The, they're, they're 3 8 to half inch. Uh, I didn't have those in stock, so we had to order them. They'll be in tomorrow. Uh, well, they'll be in on Monday. And then the drive wheels will go back on, and this one, it's all ready to go. This thing really turned into a lot of work, that's for sure. Okay, what am I going to do about the ABS? Uh, I'm not going to do anything at this point, other than my obligation. I'm letting the client know that the ABS is not functioning on this bus. It's all disconnected. It's not there. Um, I don't want to open myself up to some kind of liability by starting to mess with it. Um, I can't see me getting the ABS system back working on this bus for under 10 grand probably. And that might even be a low number because the tone rings are, that are on here are so rusty and nasty back behind there. Um, so the hub's got to come off. There's no mounts for the sensors. Uh, we got to get new sensors. And then is there something wrong with the computer? It, who knows what's going to be wrong, but there's going to be a lot of man hours, a lot of labor, a lot of parts to get that ABS working again. I am replacing that valve. We ordered that, that big air leak. So I'm gonna take care of it where it'll pass a normal pre-trip brake inspection, just not have functioning ABS. Um, but the air brakes will still work as they're supposed to. Um, we've got all the air leaks taken care of. This thing would leak down the air completely in like five minutes or less when it first got here. So we've taken care of so many major, major air leaks. Uh, absolutely crazy how much air it was leaking. But we'll be able to pass a DOT uh, air brake pre-trip inspection now with air loss. Um, 
as soon as we get done with this. So the last little leak in the air system here on these brakes, and then those two rusted out tanks in the in the front. I was worried about this tank in the back when we were taking it apart when I saw how rusty it was, uh, but the, the two front ones were the ones that ended up being rusted through where the straps are at. So this is a, uh, it's unfortunate that somebody sold the bus with the ABS disconnected like that. Um, it, it would have been better to leave the light on on the dash and let somebody know it wasn't functioning properly instead of just disconnecting it. So, um, but I don't want to get tied up in something where I get sued because I messed with it. And you know, what, what am I supposed to do? It, it's going to be a big, a big job to get the ABS functioning back on this bus again, because it is so, uh, it's obviously been off for a long, long, long time and bringing it back is, is going to be quite a bit of work. So stay tuned. We'll have a test drive hopefully next week on this bus. From a mile away, you can hear them play as they climb that hill with ease. But at the top of that mountain, there's a new life waiting for those who can make the run. If they can make it to the top, Scott will put them in the shop till their new life has begun. Bus Grease Mountain, where the buses come to run. We're gonna get that big job done 